Hello friends. Today I will discuss the phasor diagram of transformer with lagging loads when R1, R2, X2, X1 are present. That is when the leakage reactances of the primary and secondary windings are taken into account in addition to the resistance of primary and secondary or taken into account. So first let us draw the equivalent circuit for the transformer that is like this. Here this is the primary winding, this is the secondary winding and this is the primary applied voltage and this is the primary winding resistance R1 and this is primary winding reactance this is also called leakage reactance and the current drawn by the primary winding is I1 and here is the no load current of the transformer that is I0 and this is represented by two parallel components one is called the core loss component that is R0 uh, which is carrying the current called IC or IW and there is another um, component called X0 which draws the magnetizing current which is responsible for flux protection in the core of the transformer then the induced EMF in the primary winding we call as E1 and the induced EMF in the secondary winding we call as E2 and the number of turns on primary side as N1, the number of turns on secondary or N2 and since the load is connected uh, is nothing but lagging load that is RL load and the secondary winding resistance is R2 and the reactance is X2 and the current drawn by the secondary circuit is I2 and the secondary induced EMF is E2 and here I1 dash is rep represents the current in the primary that is responsible for the compensation of the I2 that is this current is necessary to make the ampere turns of the primary equal to the ampere turns of the secondary so that the input current to the primary or the primary current is nothing but I1 is equal to I0 plus I1 dash vector sum and once this is known and uh, here uh, V2 is the terminal voltage of the secondary winding then the KVL equation can be drawn, uh, written for this and similarly for this circuit so here this parallel branch has the I mean, uh, voltage across it equal to E1. So for this loop when we write the KVL we get supply voltage V1 is equal to R1 I1 plus J X1 I1 plus here is the voltage across the parallel branch that is nothing but E1. Similarly coming to the secondary circuit here the induced EMF E2 is the source for the secondary circuit so E2 is equal to R2 I2 plus J X2 I2 plus I V2. So taking these two equations into account if we draw the vector diagram or that is phasor diagram then that becomes our desired phasor diagram. First draw the flux vector like this that is phi m and then i m draw in phase with phi m like this then draw a line representing E s and and lax phi m by 90 degrees like this since the load is lagging in nature the current uh, vector can be drawn as uh, i I s by lagging uh, V E s by some angle like this phi s. The angle between E s and I s is nothing but phi s. Then 
add the vectors ISXS and ISRS and also VS. So from the secondary terminal that is load voltage is represented as V2 or VS like this. So then adding that to the ISRS that is the voltage drop across the secondary resistance that is ISRS in phase with IS like this. Then draw the IS axis that is voltage drop across the leakage reactance of the secondary winding that is I2 X2 or IS axis like this. So which leads the current vector by 90 degrees. Then we get a vector called ES like this. Then we know ES and the EP are in phase. So to draw the primary side uh, phasor diagram, draw the ES, I mean E1 or that is also called EP in the opposite direction to the ES. So which we call as minus uh, EP that is induced EMF in the primary side. So since the direction is already shown so we neglect the sign for the induced EMF of the primary winding and there draw a line a vector that is I1 dash which is responsible for the MMF balance between primary and secondary and also exactly opposite to the IS like this. IP dash and IS have 180 degrees like this and this IP dash value depends upon the number of turns or the ratio of the turns and the IS value. Next draw the vector IC perpendicular to IM which represents the no load core loss component like this. Then draw the resultant current that is no load current that is I0 like this. Resultant of IM and IC that is I0 like this. And having known I0 and IP dash find out what is the resultant of I0 and I IP dash. Then we get IP. This IP is nothing but the input current to the primary winding and now draw a line a vector IP RP this is also we can say I1 R1 in phase with IP or I1 IP is also called I1 so then draw a line IP XP this can also be written as I1 X1 perpendicular to the current vector IP like this. Then adding EP, IP or P, IP XP vectorially then we get what is called the applied voltage that is VP or that is also called a V1. Now the angle between I0 and VP is called the no load power factor angle whereas the angle between IP and VP is called the phi P and this is called the power factor of the transformer primary site. So this is the vector diagram or phasor diagram for lagging load by considering the leakage reactances of the transformer and also the winding resistance of the transformer. The same procedure can be adopted for leading load by taking this x1, x2, r1, r2 into account.